Hey guys, JT here, and today I'm gonna to take you through everything you'll need to know to get started using Gaia GPS. So we're gonna go through selecting map layers, downloading maps, importing a GPX file, and how to work with that when you're out in the field. And you can do this all from home, drinking out of your favorite coffee cup. All right, let's get started. So first of all, when you open Gaia GPS, you're gonna see the Gaia GPS map, something like this. You won't see the waypoints that I have saved here, but you'll see this version of the um, Gaia GPS topo map. So let's say that we're gonna do a run around the Timberline Trail on Mount Hood. We're gonna zoom into the area that we wanna to go to, and the first thing we're gonna do is select the type of map layer that we want for that trip. Now, you can use the Gaia GPS um, built topo layer that we have here as the default, and it's a pretty good map layer. I tend to prefer the Forest Service 2016 map, um, and I'll, I'm gonna show you how to select that layer and any other layers that you might want now. So to get to layers, you go in the upper right corner to the stacked paper menu, tap that, and then you'll have the option for some different layers here. Now when you first open it up, you'll need to customize what this list looks like. So in order to do that, you'll go down to add map layers at the bottom, select that, and then you can pull from a variety of different sources here, depending on your subscription level. So, um, I'm in the U.S. Most of the things that I'm going to look at are in this U.S. category. There's also some, some other useful things. The satellite imagery can be pretty useful. And uh, feature and weather overlays. Those are a few different categories that I use pretty regularly. So let's go to United States. And then I'll show you my preferred maps are the um, U.S. Forest Service 2016 map layer. I'll use that for most any trip in a national forest. Uh, if I'm going into a national park or something, I'll generally use the USGS topo layer. And then if I'm going into a local local park, city park, something like that, I'll use the default Gaia GPS uh, topo layer. So we'll select that. Now, the way that you add that to your list is up in the right corner there. You would click Add since I already have it. Um, I don't get that option. All right, so now we go to map sources. The next thing that you're gonna wanna do is set it up to be able to overlay multiple different types of maps on one. So you'll select map overlay at the top there, and then you'll go down to layered maps down at the bottom, and you'll turn that on. And that just says that you'll be able to stack multiple maps on top of each other. All right, so we wanna go Forest Service 2016. So we're gonna select that map. And we're just gonna use that one. We're not gonna use the Gaia Topo, so we're gonna get rid of Gaia Topo by clicking that little red X. Now we're looking at the Forest Service 2016 map of Mount Hood. Now, the next thing that we wanna do is download all the maps for that area so that we can use them um, when we're offline up on the mountain. So to do that, we're gonna tap the plus up at the top of the screen, and then we're gonna tap download maps and we're gonna get this box here that allows us to select the area that we wanna download maps for. So we'll drag the corners of that box to select the area that we want, and we'll get the estimated size up at the top there, 37 megabytes, and we'll click Save. Now we get this dialog which allows us to select which layers we wanna download since we had Forest Service 2016 already selected. It's, it's selected. Um, to download, and then up at the top, we have the option to include data to create and navigate routes offline, which just means um, it will download trail information so that you can actually create a route along trails when you're offline. So if you wanna plot some routes offline using the app, leave that on. And then we'll go next. It's gonna want us to name it. Pick a name, and then we'll hit save. Now, up in the upper left there, you'll see the spinning wheel. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that that completes before you go offline. Now, if you tap it, it will show you your download status and you can see how close you are to having everything downloaded. You wanna make sure that finishes before you go offline. 
and that's selecting your map layers and downloading your map. The next thing we're going to do is import a GPX file, a GPX route file that we'll use when we're out in the field. I generally create route files using Caltopo. I find it to be a better tool, um, desktop route planning tool, so I'll create GPX files in there and then I'll bring them into Gaia, Gaia GPS to navigate in the field. Now I'll get to my route file generally through the notes app on an iPhone or the files app. You can also email it to yourself. There's a variety of different ways to get there. But if you save it to something like your notes app, you'll see the um, GPX file. You can just tap that and then you'll see all of the waypoint data in there. You don't really need to understand what that says. You'll go to the share icon up in the upper right and then you're going to find Gaia GPS to open that file with. You'll tap it and it will import that route into Gaia GPS. So now you have this route file to use when you're out in the field and you have your maps downloaded. You're all ready to go. Now to select that um, route file, you'll tap it and you'll drag up this uh, info at the bottom of the screen. You can select your route file and it will give you the distance and some other information. Now this particular GPX doesn't have um, gain and loss information so you're not going to see that there. However, when you are out in the field, if you want to, you can click this more button and select guide me up at the top and it will show it will tell you how far you have to go and it will show you your position on the route. That is how you download maps, um, select maps, download maps, and upload a GPX file. Another thing that you can do when you're out in the field is the record function, which you'll see up at the top there. That allows you to record your own track when you're out in the field, and that will get saved to Gaia GPS. All right, that was everything you should need to know to get started using Gaia GPS. If you have any questions, hit me up, uh, jt at alpenflow. A-L-P-E-N-F-L-O dot com. Um, and yeah, let me know what you think. Hope it was useful and see you out there. Cheers.